We are 22S Radio. 22S Radio is 22SMedia.com and 88.1 FM KKJZ HD3 Long Beach, Los Angeles. Ah. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Golden Spotlight. I'm your host, Rob Flores, and we are located here broadcasting at California State University, Long Beach. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. If this is uh, your first time tuning in, uh, it's finals week. Oh man, there are so many tests and exams for everybody. But, uh, good luck everybody to your exams. Um, at this time, I would like my guests to please introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Yasmin Tamras. Thank you so much for having me here on behalf of Long Beach Local News. It's great to be here on campus. <laughs> yeah, there's so much going on and uh, oh wow. Like I said, finals. Finals are coming. <laughs> Very nerve-wracking. I remember yes. those times, and I'm not unhappy to not be there. <laughs> I wish you the best of luck, and everybody oh. else, though, that is in the same boat. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I was wondering. Uh, so I like to start off from the beginning, um, especially first with, like, life growing up, uh, you know, childhood, um, elementary school. Uh, what was life growing up? Life growing up for me was very interesting. I was born and raised in London and my mom is Spanish and my dad is Indonesian Chinese. So they were both immigrants, but they never got married. Um, my dad actually lives in Germany. So we lived in Germany when I was very young for five years. I went to kindergarten there. And then when I, when I was six years, we said, okay, she needs to get into a proper education, go back to London and stay there. But I went to a German school in London to keep the language. And so I'd basically been there um, until practically two years ago. Even when I was young though, whilst we were living in Germany, I was fortunate to travel because of my dad's job all around Asia. So we lived in Thailand for a year and Singapore, India, all, all parts of the world. And so I was very much exposed to different cultures growing up and, um, you know, just really loved all the colorfulness that the world has to offer. So when I was back in London, it was just like, oh, one place. <laughs> However, London is so multicultural, so I didn't feel like I was missing any parts of the world uh, as I remained. So that was kind of my journey as a young kid, getting into um, kindergarten school, different parts of the world. And then I came over to America two years ago. Um, I went to UCLA, did an extension course in entertainment studies. Before that, I got a BA in London at King's College London in German studies. Again, part of the whole Germanness, <laughs> carrying that through my life. I feel like I've uh, committed four years of my life to Germany. Um, but that ultimately actually led me getting into television and film because whilst I was at King's College London doing German studies, the beauty of that was it's not really fixated on the language, it's fixated on the culture, on the history, on the politics. And there was one that was about film as well, So because German film historically is known to be very different. I mean, it's got its own style in a sense. Um, and when I had my third year, we all go to a partner university in Germany, I chose to do an internship, but to do that, you had to find it yourself. Whereas if you were going to partner up with a university, your university, which I know here it means college, so forgive me if I keep on saying university, I'm just so used to that. Um, yeah, I uh, found a TV and distribution international marketing position as an as a intern over there at one of the biggest networks of Germany called Pro 7 z 1 and I learned a lot there, I will say that, and ultimately it opened my eyes to America. I actually wanted to go to either Australia or America, and everybody was like, well, Australia is very far. And I know, like, I love traveling, but I also don't want to be too far removed. And LA is pretty, I mean, LA, Long Beach, the whole Southern California, because, sorry, I'm actually based in LA, but I come here throughout the week, uh, very often, of course, and um, it is far. I feel like it's a bit of a bubble here on this side of the world. I mean, what do you think, Rob? <laughs> well, I've, I've never really been from... out uh, of, of um, California, so okay. I've never really gotten a chance to do much. I will but, say um... this, California is very well versed. <laughs> 
Yeah, lots of culture, uh, food. I, that's the one thing I always like to also ask my guests, especially when they've traveled and stuff. Any food stories? Oh, <laughs> any food stories? I mean, <laughs> there's okay. This is a funny one. <laughs> I uh, went, practically it was like a blind date because I couldn't remember meeting the guy in Mykonos and then we reconnected in London and he took me to this place called Don Le Noir which is a dark restaurant, it's pitch black dark, you can't see anything so they managed to take away all the light and the waiters are blind because they know their way around, they're used to not seeing anything. So as you arrive to the restaurant, you then say chef selection, vegetarian, fish, or, or uh, meat. And I, we took chef selection. You tell them your dietary requirements. So you don't really know what's coming at you. Regardless, if you choose vegetarian or whatever, you just don't know what's going to come at you. So you get into this dark room then. And then when you're pouring your wine, you've got to stick your finger in the glass to measure how much liquid is going <laughs> up so it doesn't overflow the glass. And then I'm just like trying whatever was thrown at me basically and it was hard bear in mind like you're using cutlery in the dark you can't see anything so you start to just eat with your hands and the first course I could tell was mashed potatoes and salmon but the second course I didn't know and I was like oh this is really chewy oh so then afterwards they asked do you want to know what you ate I'm like yes I do want to know what I ate and it was kangaroo meat. The chewy thing was kangaroo meat. And I never thought, I've heard that in Australia, kangaroo meat is a delicatessen. But no, it wasn't, I mean, for me, I think just not knowing what it was and in the dark and having something chewy, and I'm not a big meat eater either, it wasn't that delectable. <laughs> But, um, yeah, I'm very, you know, I'm adventurous. I will, even if I try to keep my dairy and gluten on a, on a low, I, I'm open to trying things because you only live once. And if, you, if you're not dying from something of, of a piece of food or something, why not? You know, <laughs> you got to try everything. How about yourself, Rob? Have you had any uh, weird food no, <laughs> experiences? Like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know it was pretty intense and let's just say there wasn't a second date then <laughs> <laughs> oh that's interesting <laughs> choose your place as wisely as a first date is all I'm saying <laughs> we'll be back after this quick commercial break <laughs> this broadcast is brought to you by the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute or OLLI at CSULB. If you are 50 and older, the Institute offers more than 80 non-credit classes in eight-week sessions, both on campus so or at a satellite location. So I play a uh, commercial of, of a promo, the joy of learning with a public like service announcement, adults. like they're all there on there, no but tests, no we're having some other thing here that they're making, having us read too, all that's like a fundraiser for our radio station. Okay. For more information, visit CSULB. Oh yeah, did you ever get to solve the headphones? Oh, okay, I'm okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, unless you want to. It's, yeah, it just slides. It's very calming, by the way. <laughs> Are you not wearing yours? <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, I think it's the wrong way. Would you and, and a friend like to travel to Europe for $22? 22 for 22 West is our fundraising campaign this year. Donate securely online at www.22westmedia.com. Do it now. Got something on your mind? Talking about your mental health doesn't have to feel weird. In fact, it's actually quite healthy. Join us every Wednesday at 10 a.m. on 22 West Radio for Brains Are Sexy Radio talk show that explores topics of mental health in the lives of college students. At Brains Are Sexy Radio, we believe a healthy brain is a sexy brain. So don't keep it balled up. Be a part of the discussion at Brains Are Sexy Radio. Welcome ladies and gentlemen to the Golden Spotlight. If this is your first time tuning in, uh, this is a a uh, radio show here at California State University, Long Beach, where I interview my guests and I have them share their life story, especially what was life as a student leading up to where they are in their careers. Um, so, 
Another thing I like to do uh, when I interview my guests is I like to call, call it the timeline. And it's pretty much the history of jobs. Like, you know, sometimes uh, uh, books can be expensive and people sometimes had to work too at the same time while going to school. But what were all the jobs leading up to where you are today? I think that's a really great question because often you don't really know um, what steps it really takes in order to get to where you want to get to. It's all, it's great to have books, I think, you know, especially self-help books and those that improve you towards your goals and watching like YouTube videos or um, having an idol, people that inspire you to become the person that you want to become. Um, but, you know, like, like I mentioned, I, so I initially didn't know what I wanted to do. I also didn't know what I wanted to study. And I think that's why I took, so to speak, the easier route for myself to get into German studies at one of the top universities in the world, just having that sort of name there because I didn't really want to study. <laughs> I did it for more for my parents. Don't a lot of us do that, right? Um, and so I was fortunate to get into that college. And as I was over there, I... Um, Basically, I asked my brother, who I didn't really know, but I reached out to him through Facebook to see if I could try a marketing and communications internship at Siemens, which is fairly random. But again, that's in Germany, and I felt like, okay, there's a relative who I don't know very well, but I want to get to know him because he's my half-brother. And so I did that for three months and I learned a lot, you know, you, you get to kind of learn about databases and all the sort of mundane tasks that you're meant to do as an intern, Excel sheets and writing stuff and whatnot. And then it was a matter of thinking, okay, I really enjoyed the marketing and communication aspect of it um, and attending events as a host or whatnot. But what realm do I want? what realm really interests me. So I looked at beauty, I looked at fashion, um, and then TV and film was another option. And I didn't get any of those like beauty fashion ones, but I managed to get the TV and uh, distribution company, and that's Red Arrow International, based in Munich, but they have production companies all across the world. So that was really fascinating and attractive to me, since I didn't know where exactly I wanted to be, I didn't know what exactly I wanted to do, but I thought, that is my way in to figure it out. And it was, again, as an international marketing communications intern, and this one I particularly learned a lot because they set tasks on writing summaries for new movies that come out and then ha like seeing the, the way that in each country production goes on and some of the set rules that they have and then what happens once they are taken on by a salesperson in order to have them distributed to other countries and networks. Um, and so I felt like, okay, I really love that aspect of selling and I also managed to go to MIPCOM in Cannes which is the biggest TV festival so Cannes Film Festival everybody knows that that's for film this is where they distribute films well the MIPCOM is where they distribute and the MIP TV is where they distribute TV shows and other sort of smaller scale movies but that have you know sort of recognition to be distributed around the world and then being at the studio in Germany, I kind of, I talk to everybody. So I think this is an important part as well. You know, you're an intern to learn. So ask questions. When they involve you in these big meetings, just observe and listen and take notes. And then whoever your hire is that you're like, um, that, that's giving you tasks, ask them the questions then after the big meeting or something. And then also try to get to know every other department saying hello and can I get you coffee and you know, just like making yourself known around all the different facets of the company that you're interning at because you never know, maybe you'll stumble across something that you enjoy or would rather get into. So for my own sake, I am um, I mean, I was very much like intrigued in marketing communications, but when I walked on set one day where I met a host, I thought, wow, this sounds like a really good or cool job to be hosting a show. And I'm very much interested in facts and like putting, um, like, like putting content out there that people can learn from because that was the show that I went on set for. And I thought, huh, that's something I'd love to do, but I don't know where to get started. Also, I am very shy. I hate public speaking. 
In fact, when I was at university, I would avoid taking a couple of film courses that I really enjoyed and would take politics instead because it was written examination rather than presentation. And that is, it's, it's funny now because I'm a news anchor, I'm an entertainment host, I do live speaking. But it's been a journey to lead up to that to make me feel like, okay, why do I have this fear? Ultimately, when people say, you know, you, you've got a voice, you know, why not? Why can't you, you know, do some, what some of the people that you see on television do? And so I seeked a meetup group. Have you ever heard of that, a meetup group? So there's an app called Meetup, and you sign up to it. Everything and anything that you're interested in, you can be part of that group. So whether that's like art or going on walks, hikes, or pottery, like there's so many crazy groups out there. And one of them was um, public overcoming your fear of public speaking. So I signed up to it. And the funny thing is, is that when I got there, I was the only one that turned up besides the organizer. And she was like, well, the whole point of public speaking is in front of people, but let's just practice all the tools and the methods. And I thought, okay. <laughs> I must say it, it was an entire day of a workshop and it helped me tremendously get over my fear. And from then on, I started taking more sort of classes where I had to present in front of people utilizing those tools. And um, then going back to my internship, as I finished that, I had my final year of university. And during my final year of university, I thought to myself, what am I going to do when I graduate? Where am I going to start? I want to get into presenting. So I looked online and I found this opportunity that was as a volunteer rep reporter for a community channel. And that helped me tremendously because in the first month, so I volunteered for a week just to cusp it out. And that was before I was going to finish my studies. And um, being with them for one week, I made myself known to them how serious I was, how dedicated I was, how motivated, how, like, how helpful I was. I was just helping the entire team there so that when I graduated and they had new openings again because every six months they have new reporters, I was able to like put myself out there and I knew their format. Um, and so it was a step-by-step -step process and it was a lot of like searching and then just going for it and applying. Um, and then once I was there, it was just full on being committed. Like I wouldn't really, let's say that was my fun because I really enjoyed it. Um, so within those six months, the first month we learned how to use the camera to pitch, to um, write articles, to do all the social media, um, and then to really just go out there ourselves. Like we'd be like a ma one man team sometimes. Like I would go with the camera, tripod, mic, everything, and then just set up the interview and interview the people. Um, we were fortunate that our executive producer was a very well known host and connected to people in the industry so that we got to do red carpets. So we got to like, do different kinds of stories. It was very community focused, um, and sort of local stories and uh, things that were going on in London really. So news and focusing on like immigrants, women, that was kind of my thing. And then some of the red carpet things, that was a different experience because being like media on the red carpet, it can look glitz and glam because you get that picture on the red carpet. But you're really just behind the, the barriers and you're like trying to get the best sound bites. But going through all those steps, you know, it really teaches you tenacity and then like working through deadlines and really putting all your heart and energy into it. And then once you see it come into fruition, the final part, you're just like, ah, you're just so pleased and proud. Um, coming over to LA was a very different story because being a foreigner, you know, you feel like you have to work twice as hard just to be able to stay in this country. And so I would literally like, if there was somebody that I would meet at an, at an event who had a camera and a mic, I'd be like, hey, can I help you out? Can I, like, I'd love to help you out and like ask people questions as well or anything. And, and so I connected with this guy called Ryan Froland, who's based in Orange County. And he was going around like asking for 
the voices of LA, what are your perspectives on LA and stuff like that? And he was putting a TED talk together. And so I learned from him, like, you know, you just get on out there, have a conversation and how to keep things fluid. Um, and so th that was kind of like another eye opener for me being over here in, a, in, in, in the States. Um, and then when I was at UCLA, after I graduated from that, I seeked for a hosting coach. And that hosting coach, she taught me different styles and different scripts and so that I would feel confident no matter what situation I was put into. So I think it's important to know that people are not naturally like the best at what they do. It comes with practice. So when you put in all the hours, you really see the results. But you have to know that there's a lot of behind the scenes work that goes into it. And so I'm constantly practicing, rehearsing, or seeking for advice and going for coaching lessons, or even a voice coach. I even went to seek a voice coach because I would lose my voice sometimes. And you, you know this, Robert. You, you, gotta, you gotta maintain the voice as a radio host as well, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so with that strength, confidence, practice, I then felt like, okay, what's the next step? And she guided me towards this platform called Afterbuzz TV, which is the ESPN of after shows talks. So they talk about different TV shows that are on TV, streaming, every type of uh, network as well. They also do popcorn talk, which highlights movies. And this is really to give a to give hosts an opportunity to work their muscle, to constantly work their muscle. So you sign up to a TV show that you enjoy. And then you're selected with a panel of like two to four hosts and you have a discussion around it. Um, and then I managed to be picked up by another network called Fab TV, which does a lot of red carpets and press junkets. And that was a different realm then. Again, I was able to be versatile being back on the red carpet. And that's a very different ball game because you're having to think fast on your toes. You only get a set amount of questions that you can ask the celebrity and then they're off because PR is like, no time, next. Yeah, so you're just like, okay, you gotta work fast. You gotta think on your toes. Um, but ultimately, I always wanted to get back into community stories. And so I was very happy that being in LA, I was found by King's College London. There's an alumni group over here and the president, Kabir Sagu, he reached out to me on LinkedIn and asked if I wanted to be part of the team. And then I was like, yes, and I want to be part of the board member. And I'm very much engaged with uh, charity work as well. So whilst I was doing my studies, I felt it was important to also travel to impoverished countries to see what life is like over there. So I went to Africa and India. Um, and then being here part of that committee, I was like, I really want to be part of the philanthropy group of it um, to like set up a foundation and for us to be engaged with charity work. So we're still working on that. We have a lot of mixers. But through that, I then met a fellow King's College alumni, Alex Shawns, who is based in Long Beach, has his own company in um, helicopters called Anthelion, and he partnered up with Long Beach Local News. And so they've become the local news media group. And Anthelion, basically, he's partnered up with them because in case we have breaking news or we do our Fly Day Friday segment, which is an aerial view of Long Beach and giving you, uh, well, the community the local stories of like what is going on within Long Beach in the upcoming week and stuff. And he was like, you know, I, I know you want to get back into uh, reporting, so would you like to try it out? And I was like, yeah, like massively. Um, and so that's how I managed to get over here as a news anchor in Long Beach. Um, so like I said, you know, it's been a journey of just really putting myself out there, volunteering a lot. It's a lot of free work that you've got to do and a lot of networking, a lot, you know, just keeping good relationships because it's great to have a connection with people, but then also maintain that relationship. Make it a point to know, you know, this person's important to me and that, and they've helped me and I'm helping them. Like, you know, finding that common ground and keeping a level of consistency, I think, is something that can um, help you get far. So there's so many resources that you can turn to, and, and that's ultimately what I use, you know, online, <laughs> those resources, and then connecting with people. Ooh, cool. We'll be right back after this quick break.
I hope I didn't ramble there. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> 22 West Radio well, it's took the timeline. three it's awards all, from you know, the International history. Broadcasting yeah. Service Conference <laughs> this year. So Here's a so message from the shows that won. Hi everyone, I'm Georgie. I'm the main host of Brains Are Sexy Radio. We're a show that tackles mental health and helps students cope with the daily stressors of college life. Because we believe helpful. a healthy brain I mean, is yes, a sexy brain. And we won an award this year for best talk that. program. Takes so come be a part of the discussion about, like, and tune in on Wednesdays from 10 so to 11 a.m. on 22 West Radio. Well, there's always Hi everyone, I'm Lisa, I'm one of the hosts from Fidashi Radio. We're a show that focuses on shining a spotlight on local music, their live aspect, as well as the playlist that explain the cultural significance of we want yeah. awards for best variety but, um, show and best live music like, broadcast. Uh -huh. Listen to Fibonacci on Friday from 1 p.m. to 10 p.m. Brains like, are sexy and know. Fibonacci are two shows, shows you do not want to miss. Okay. Thank Please you very much know, for tuning in to 22 West Radio. Um, we definitely want to get we definitely want to get the word out there about Long Beach local yeah. news and this is how it's working and restructuring and stuff. So. Just accordions and waltz. Well, you're wrong. I forgot. There's a couple of other networks that I'm with as well, but I'll mention those if I can. Yeah. And I'm your host along with my lovely co-host Selene Castaneda, aka Kaz, and we are. Francois, so la had you. Yeah, I remember I tried as many things as Bring I could. You, uh, so cal, CSU in 2016, in my radio West show, radio, when I was, when I was all doing French or French theme music. There's this national the good, competition, the and the show became the, the old and the new, the best as public affairs well program in the nation. Uh, this one? Yeah, the one that, the well, French I did at Cerritos at first for a while. And then when I came here, Join us yeah, the intercollegiate broadcast system. Oh, yeah. Well, that was yeah. the very interesting. Time but then I remember telling my advisor, uh, I'd really like to do something After different. And he's like, why? Well, I don't want to be known as just doing something serious. Truly and the public Francois. affairs office kind of was wanting like a little bit of control in my show at the time. Because okay. they were like, oh, like we heard a council member from this and that city's here and this and that city's here. And they'd be like, we didn't know. They're like, how? You're the public affairs office. This is yeah. Dominic like, Curry. oh, I a student did it. A student? <laughs> how is a student bringing politicians and we're not aware of it? And so at the end, they were like, kind of wanting to kind of their hands on my show over there. What happened to That's sick. Oh, and I remember I told my advisor, I, I would like to do something different just well, so that I have something going on. I was like, what do you want to do? How would I talk pro wrestling? He goes, I don't know, is it possible to talk pro wrestling that long? I'm like, I wanted to be different on camera. So I got a Turkish belt and I airbrushed my name on the back to stand out different on camera. And so it's like a second show that I do on the side. Have fun. Yeah, we gotta get this on picture. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen, with the Golden Spotlight. I'm your host, Rob Flores, and we are broadcasting live from California State University, Long Beach. And I'm back here with my guest, and, uh, you know, we're talking about the timeline, you know, uh, uh, the jobs leading up to where she is today. And uh, my guest was telling me about, you know, uh, the organizations that she uh, represents, you know, it, it's always interesting because, you know, when you hear MMJ, you think of, you know, so many different hats. Yes. And uh, so on top of, like, the different hats, like, tell us about what you do today. Yeah, so um, as I was mentioning, uh, being at Afterbus, I did a few after shows, and now they've given me the opportunity to co-host and co-create, essentially, um, my own show called Talking TED Talks, where we select a TED Talk and bring in the speaker of the TED Talk. And if we can't get them in, we have them Skype in, or we get a couple of professionals who are affiliated to that topic to talk about that TED Talk. And that's with Jesse Janady, my co-host. And so that's been fairly exciting because it's really like taught me about, okay, week on week, and this I'm sure you understand, Rob, it's like, the stresses of booking a guest sometimes. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's like, they will say, yes, I can commit. And then, oh, God, something's just come up. Can we push it to that week? And then you're like, okay, because you gotta, you got to abide to your guests and then find quickly another guest. And then you got to do the research and you got to break down the show and all that jazz. And then once you're on set, you have to forget about everything that's going on in your life and just solely focus on what is in front of you. And I think that's why I love this job so much because it really brings me into the present time because there's really no other way you've got to listen you've got to know what you want to ask or what people want to know um, and so it's really a matter of being in tune 
and and setting it like you have to time manage yourself beforehand so well to make sure that everything has been well prepared even if it's like the last minute that you have to sort it out. Um, so I do that. I'm also still part of Fab TV doing press junkets and red carpets when I can. In the past month, I haven't been doing them so much because I've been committing most of my time to Long Beach local news. In between, I'm also at Pop Fusion TV, which is a really great platform, broadcast on Spectrum and AT&T, as well as online that highlights celebrities and their foundations. Because we often see about what celebrities do, what they're known for, but we don't know what they do behind closed doors and what good they do as well. So that's the platform that likes to highlight that. And um, I hope I'm not forgetting another, but Long Beach Local News is the main um, outlet that I'm with. and. We are, it's so unique. I love being part of the team and I have to be, you know, so grateful to Alex and Ryan for having me aboard and giving me this opportunity. I seriously feel very lucky and it's it's different because it's not like your typical long established local news outlet. It is the only video source in Long Beach that covers local news because everything else in Long Beach is digital or print, whereas we're the only video source out there. And, um, you know, I they've given me the chance to really put my creative input in there as to like what kind of segments we cover. So Tuesdays, we do like Talk to Us Tuesdays where we talk to the community and want to know what their perspective is of the city and what can be bettered. And then um, Wednesdays, we have a special segment that goes out. We had a Cambodian uh, highlight basically, spotlighting the Cambodian community of Long Beach. So we like to spotlight different communities as well as different hot topics that are going on. So that's our special segment. And Fridays at the moment, we might change the timings, but Fridays at 2 p.m. we have our weekly uh, news roundup. So you know what's going on in Long Beach for the week and uh, anything from breaking to entertainment to uh, sports to politics to business everything very local centric of course and then at 4 p.m we do our community calendar which we want to do in the Anthelion helicopter once we have the proper equipment so we're still trialing that and since there's a lot of new equipment out there you know there's always a constant change in that realm and tech and things like that and so that would be our Friday Friday seg Friday fly day segment and that's going on an aerial view of Long Beach and showcasing what's going on in Long Beach that weekend and the upcoming week. Um, it takes up a lot of my time, of course, because the setup is different. You know, you're having to really structure as to what is going on within the week. You have to be on the whole time, having those no notifications. Um, and then seeing, you know, what is being talked about and putting the script together. Um, and then when breaking goes on, you're just like, oh my God, okay, so who's available to go and cover? And you just gotta go. <laughs> and we're a small team at the moment, but we have a great um, uh, group of interns who are helping us. So, you know, I gotta, I gotta like massive, gotta give them massive, massive, massive props there because they're like really great. They write articles, they go out there as well. They haven't done on-camera hosting before, but we got them to do reports within a week just to see so that they could get a feel because I think it's important given what I've been able to experience through my internships and through voluntary work, I only learned by doing. And then by doing, I learned my strength and my weaknesses and I got feedback through it. And I thought, you know what, here's an opportunity where we have a great set of students and interns and volunteers who want to learn and want to grow in different ways and try out what they like. So let's give them that opportunity as well. And so that's essentially what we do. You know, we are a fairly fresh team in a sense because it is restructuring. We're very different in a sense that not just that we are the only video, full video production in Long Beach for local news, but we're also digital, whereas a lot of local news stations are pretty old school still in a sense that they're more cable. And, um, you know, I mean, who is tuning into cable? You know, everybody's streaming or online. And so we do our weekly news roundup and community calendar on Facebook Live. We also stream live on Instagram. And what we love to do after we have finished our segment, we still keep the ball rolling on Instagram so that people can 
have a conversation with us. So people are like commenting and then we have them request to dial in because we want to be connected to the community. It's important that we put the voices out there of what matters to the community of Long Beach. And that is what Long Beach Local News is all about. We are fun, interactive, and we are engaging. And we just, we want to hear from you predominantly what matters to you what does the city need to work on to better itself because I think from my perspective from traveling from in different parts of the world Long Beach is is in its teenage stages there are parts that are obviously like really well built you know they've changed and other parts that are still very much run down and then you just see and hear what the city is trying to do in order to make the community come together, be more active, provide them also different schemes or like, you know, access to for people to be able to get into what they want to get into. Um, and, and one story that I feel like was for, for me close to my heart that I wanted to cover was about the homeless situation because I'm seeing what Mayor Robert Garcia was trying to do about implementing having homeless go, go to um, motels that are no longer in use. I thought, that's a pretty cool idea, you know? And so I, those kind of stories fascinate me in a sense of, from the grassroots level and a city perspective, what are the people doing to better the area? and society? Because that can have a ripple effect, because that can inspire on a more national level. And I think Long Beach does a pretty good job at it. And like, for instance, last Wednesday, we were riding with the Heart One unit, which stands for the Homeless Education, um, uh, sorry, the Homeless Education and, oh my gosh, <laughs> Heart. Homeless Education and, God. Okay, it will come back to me, but you gotta look them up. Um, because they go all around helping the homeless, talking to them, making sure they're okay and seeing, you know, like, is there any way that we can help in order to get you into the services that you need um, provided? And they also teach mental health. So that's something very unique as a fire department that they have that arm in which they um, help themselves as well as others about mental health because I think you know at school as well I mean I was hearing in your adverts here on the radio about mental health and I definitely think you know it's very important to know that there is support out there but to also have those support structures implemented and to have that access another thing I'd like to ask my guest is uh, it's a typical question it's a uh, sorry homeless education and response team there you go. <laughs> okay. That's what it stands for. Um, what would you like your legacy to be? And where do you see yourself after retirement? Ooh, <laughs> where do I see you? Okay, let's start off with the first question. My legacy is, um, you know, spotlighting those communities and people that have done so much great work. Essentially, what inspired me through my travels and going to Africa and India was the way that some of the people live in such a minimal way and don't have so much disposable to them. So I would like to set up a foundation, specifically an art foundation, to help refugees and um, orphans because those are the two groups that I was working with. And um, that's something, you know, I'm working towards. <laughs> and. I think, you know, I, I'm hoping I can accomplish that within the next 10 years or so. I would definitely love to be able to stay here in this country. I don't know how, for how long for, but I, I, for the time being, I really enjoy California. Um, even though home and base is in London and my family is in Spain. So as for retirement, where I would like to be, so far I've seen Monterey as a very prospective place. I don't think I could be one of those people who would be just sitting around doing nothing now that I've like worked hard or created a family. Like I'd always want to be engaged in some form of voluntary work, I think, once I'm retired because that will keep you active physically and mentally stimulated. So I think that's important for health. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Um, so another thing I like to do is, you know, I've always tried to get people from a variety of, um, of career fields, and the idea is you never know who could be listening. Chances are it's a, it's a student who they happen to be listening to the guest, and they're like, oh, that's exactly the, the type of uh, degree or the type of career I want, and they could relate to, to that guest, and they, they want to be able to follow in their footsteps and stuff. And, you know, even just getting tips and stuff like that. Um, my professor um, recommended that we go to a camp. It was a camp. Um, and I, I just wanted you to listen t to this thing. Yeah. Um, so pretty much, uh, um, it turned out I was the only one that went to camp. <laughs> because, uh, well, I mean, it was pricey. I had to pay 400 to go to it. But uh, Oh, my God. Pretty much, uh, it's, it was, it's run by Hal Eisner. Okay, yes. And uh, he has different uh, reporters who serve as mentors. So you put in groups, and it's students, and you're paired up with at least one or two reporters, and you get a cameraman. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have actors, and uh, these actors, um, they come up with a different scenario every year, and they had police and firefighters there too, to, to uh, you know, act along and yeah. create this like fake... Um, type of emergency and we're throughout the day just like going around and trying to figure out what is the story and uh, try to create a basically a package. Wow, here it is. I'm excited to see it. Oh, ah, that would help putting the button on here. <laughs> <laughs> is this is for our listeners to hear what's going on. Great. <laughs> You're great on camera reporting as well, not just on radio as ours. <laughs> <laughs> so that was like a case or a scene yeah. that you had to basically enact as a reporter. That's a pretty cool program out there for people who want to experience a, a reporting style situation. So the, do you feel like that helped you? Was that the first yeah, time Yeah, I mean, that was the very like that? first time. I've never really like... Um, done anything like that um, when we're introducing ourselves I was like oh my I just realized I'm the only one from Cal State Long Beach here <laughs> like oh wow like people flew in from different places and stuff and uh, I mean obviously yeah, 400 was quite the investment just to go ahead and go to a two-day camp but um, you know I, I guess people you know they always say like figure out what you want to do after school and I'm still like kind of thinking about it I'm like yeah I get my degree like next week but I've, I've tried to be versatile, but I've tried to, you know, do radio and talk show and, you know, even do a, you know, like a talk show of like wrestling and all that. Yeah. But I'm, I'm still figuring out, but I'm trying to, that's why, you know, they say, you know, learn a little bit of everything. Yeah. So, um, I agree with you. Yeah. I think you're doing it because I can see you doing it, you know, having your own radio show having a wrestling show and then being proactive in finding a, a scheme that yes it was a big sum to pay but ultimately it's an investment towards yourself mm -hmm. and I think if you're investing and and you know all these sort of coachings and things like that that's been an investment as well and I'm not gonna lie like I've had to ask my parents for that support and 
thankfully they've seen me grow and see how dedicated and hardworking I am that they have said they are supporting me and which they still <laughs> basically you know they'll always be my number one supporters no matter what choice I make but um, you know I think um, for anybody out there who is finishing up their studies and still doesn't quite know what they're doing it's okay because everybody has a different journey a different pace at, at, at the way that things happen things don't always naturally occur and what I also find is that if you are ultimately going for a job just because it pays but it doesn't ultimately fulfill you it's not really what you feel like doing don't do it I get it if you have to wait tables in order to be able to take on these courses that can help you towards your goal um, don't see waiting tables as like a waste of time but see it as a means of getting to where you want to get to to have those funds to be able to pay for that um, because I think sometimes when we do our daily mundane jobs we kind of forget that why are we doing it okay yeah this is why I need these funds to do that then once you can stop doing that you're getting on to the next level and it's really just a matter of like I said constantly getting yourself out there connecting with people and like you're doing right now you're doing your wrestling show your radio show like I was doing the after shows as day I'm doing the red carpets and stuff like that and made me figure out what I ultimately like and what I don't like and then I'm gearing myself more towards what I like and then being able to say no to the things that I don't like because then it comes to a point once you have tried a bit of everything and then you're figuring slowly out what matters to you most you're then able to say no at some point and then just say yes to the things that you want to do. <laughs> yeah, um, this, this is exactly why I made this show. This show is all about trying to get people that are already in the business of things from different careers and uh, give some tips and pointers. Yeah, and yeah. also another, just another pointer is, and it's something that was quite, quite curious to me that I recently realized, like women, you know, we have this kind of fear of and, and this timeline of, you know, okay, if I'm doing my studies, I got my studies at this stage, and then I'm getting into a career, maybe, or I'm becoming a mother and married and, and leading that life, or even as a career woman, you're juggling both as a family, and that goes for men too. But I'm saying as a woman, if you then decide to just, like, be at home and, and cater for your family, which is also very great, I think it's important to have, you know, a great supportive being there for your family but once you get to a stage where your kids grow up and they leave home you're like well what do i do for myself and i i for me i was always like conscious of what i want to do when i'm older and what are the steps for me to get to that point so like i mentioned i want to set up a foundation but first of all i want to highlight great people and what they are doing those changes and learn from them as well and and that's all for my own growth and so i can get to that point of being able to help others but like i i also made it a point you know if i need to travel because of whatever family circumstances what other options are there for me and so i took up a yoga teacher's training course I teach yoga on the side. It keeps me grounded. It's something that's good for the body, mind, soul. And um, I had, you know, like, I think what a lot of us don't really talk about as well is it's great and all to be capable, um, you know, when you are able to go to college, um, have the support or want a scholarship, um, are able to connect with people who can help you along the way to get to your goals but you know sometimes when your health needs a bit of attention I think that's something that you also have to listen to so for myself yoga was something because I knew like I suffered from a few things like my bone structure and and hormonal imbalances and whatnot and so you know I, I sort of found a way okay what is it that I enjoy professionally but also what is it that I enjoy for myself for my mind, for my body, and then what it, can I do something with that later on in life? And that's why I took a teacher's training for yoga as well. So I think, you know, it's important to have a balance, to not just, you know, you, you want to have fun in life, you want to have a great career, but you also have to take care of yourself. Yeah, I remember I went through a phase where, you know, I was a bit of a hermit, I think, because, like, I reached the point where like I was in community college for so long and like my family and friends would be like why is it taking you so long or I'd get compared to people and um, 
it wasn't until I, I took a political science class that one professor shared his personal story. He said, well, I was in graduate school and a professor was like, hey, all of you, you should think about, um, and there's nothing wrong with it, but you guys should all try to get tested for learning disabilities. You never know if you have something. And so I did, and, you know, I was like, no wonder I've been here so long. Like, there's certain classes, like, I just can't, no matter if I go to a tutor and stuff, I can't get across that obstacle. And uh, uh, my sister, like, she's kind of at the stage where, like, she doesn't think college is for her just because she's like, well, it took you a decade to finish community college. Like, it's not for me. And I'm like, I'm really hoping my sister changes her mind. But um, it was a long road all because I had, you know, a hidden issue. I had, you know, a learning disability. Which you didn't know of. Yeah. So <laughs> I feel like so much time passed me by and I was at first for a while like insecure that I was like, man, I'm like, I'm getting to be the older student in the class and this and that. And like, I just had all these doubts, but I'm finally at the finish line next week. <laughs> hey, and, and, and kudos to you. And I'm really glad you took that class and that teacher was guided you in a sense, you know, and I think that's important. Like, you never really know. I have a, I have a similar story. I mean, I was at college and they're like, why? Um, like, I'm really bad at numbers. There were certain aspects that I felt like I need to get myself tested. And then I found out I had dyslexia, <laughs> which is very interesting because nobody would know or think that. But I know myself. There's just different degrees of it. And there's and that goes with anything, you know. Um, and so I do think th th I don't know. I, I guess here it is difficult sometimes to have the access because it is costly to get yourself tested for different things. But if there are certain avenues that universities or colleges can provide to support students. I think that's important to look into. Um, and, and, and it's funny, so you're, you're mentioning about your sister not wanting to go into college because she doesn't feel um, like she, she also feels like she doesn't learn as fast or something. She just fears like, oh, I'm not going to be a sucker and be in school as long as you have. I'm like, hey, it's because I didn't know I had a certain thing. Yeah. Like, had I known sooner, I would have had the resources to, to finish faster. So she's under the impression school takes you a decade or more. Oh, no, because she saw that from yeah. you, but you didn't know. And that so wasn't, like, you know. Oh, come on, please think about college. So I, I, I don't know what to do, but... You know, my mom, she doesn't know what to do about my sister. And my sister, it's her senior year, but she keeps saying college is not for her. Okay. Well, I mean, oh everybody God. has their own journey. I, I do say, you know, I went to college because my parents wanted me to go to. And then I will say that I'm thankful that I went in the end because it's taught me so many different skills that I didn't even realize I'm still utilizing today, which is basically writing properly um, and managing my time properly. Um, because at college, you have to be so much more self-sufficient than at school because there's so, so much free time. You only have a couple of hours of one module and then you have all this free time. But what do you do with it? Well, that's up to you. It's up to you how much you want to put into it in order to succeed. Um, I, I mean, you know, I've met so many people that haven't gone to college and they've really succeeded. And I think, you know, if, if you have something in mind, and sometimes it just happens all of a sudden later where you're like, hey, I want to do this. Now let me look into it and how can I do it? And I think, you know, if your sister then kind of has an idea at some point, that's great. And she can always go to college at some point too. I don't, I never want to like take, like force anybody into anything or like, since it's not in my place. Um, but I, I do, I do think, you know, being at college or reading, studying, like studying, studying is a one thing. Like I've noticed that the people that have not gone to college, like recently I interviewed, um, he was a Grammy award winning music producer who didn't go to college. Yet he was so creative and so brilliant. Like he's worked with Beyonce and Jay Z and like won an award um, through the productions that he set up with them. And it was fascinating because he was resourceful. He kind of f found things that he enjoyed and just delved into it and made it his thing. So he's not just a music producer, but he's also like a creative artist and set designer and sound designer. And, and then at some point he did go into a special sound designing course. Um, and so I think, you know, if you do figure out at one stage, you're like, you know, I, I'm going to I'm going to explore that more. Yeah. 
we are down to our last minute. But uh, you have any closing statements and how can people contact you? Yeah, so um, if you'd like to follow me and my journey, I'm on all social media, mainly on Instagram, at Yasmin Tanres. That's Y-A-S-M-I-N-E. T A N R E S. So I share more posts of like what's going on in my life and stories. I do plenty of stories. And then I would love for everybody to follow at Long Beach Local News because that's where, of course, you'll know what's going on within your local vicinity. And we have our weekly news roundup and community calendar and all the standalone features. And head on over to the website www.longbeachlocalnews.com. We also have YouTube and Facebook, Long Beach Local News. Set your notifications on for those because that's when we tell you when we're going live and any other articles that come out that you can read upon. Um, and I would also like to put out there that we are seeking for interns. So anybody that's interested in learning or is able to, um, to put their skills in with a local news media group, we're looking for digital business development interns a sales intern and editorial, so for editing work. If you're great at Adobe Premiere Pro or iMovie Maker, that's super. Um, and we are also looking for videographers. So hit us up on longbeachlocalnews at gmail.com and you can also email me, yasmin.longbeachlocalnews at gmail.com. And we're always looking for new sponsors because we have great deals for our sponsors where we even make videos for them if they need it and um, have their logo on rotating ads, whether that's on our website or even on our news segments. Um, and we can even mention them as we're doing segments themselves. So many different options there that you can look on our website. Um, and yeah, look, check out the team, Alex Shaunt. Ryan McGinnis, he's the ultimate founder and creator of Long Beach Local News, who has really founded this like since 2015 and held it on his back for so long. And now, you know, this team is just constantly growing and we're all like learning and, you know, evolving. And, you know, it's, it's not the typical structure of like higher down, like it's we really, you know, make it a point of what is it that you want to bring to the table or that you can bring to the table and what is it that we can teach you? Um, so it's that kind of same level leadership purpose. <laughs> well, thank you so much for taking the time to be here on the Golden Spotlight. Thank you very much for having me, Robert Flores, on behalf of Long Beach Local News. It's been a great pleasure. <laughs>